it is important that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ be, uh, be in a place where he, she's rightly informed, you know, and um, it, it be in a place where, where it makes the right choices. We always have to be in that place where we make the right choices. You know, because it, it, it's, it's what satisfies the will of God. It is the, it's the counsel that he gives all the time. All the time. It's the counsel that he gives all the time. But I, I want us to look at a, a very simple, very simple, actually very simple aspect of, of the Christian walk. Um, and I'm tailoring this as a simple way of defining the attitude that we must have in times like this. So let's turn first our Bible to the book of Romans, chapter 1. And I want to read two verses, 16 and 17. He says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God. The gospel, as we have already defined over and over and over again, is the message of his grace. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, of the good news of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone. One that believeth to everyone that believeth. So the key that unlocks the treasury house of the gospel of Christ is believing it. That's the key that unlocks the treasury house. And once you use that key, and you unlock that treasury house, then you, you can freely enjoy all the provisions of the gospel. You can freely enjoy all, not some, but all the provisions of the gospel. For it is the power of God unto salvation, to everyone that believeth. If you don't believe it, you can't experience its power. But if you believe it, then you will enjoy all its provisions. So we believe into the power of God all the time into the enjoyment of his power, into the enjoyment of his provisions. We we'll believe into it. And we must keep this in mind because, you see, take away believing God, the, uh, uh, the word of God, and you become so ordinary. So ordinary. So ordinary that the things that should have influence over you, will not have influence over you, and you will be in a place where the things that should not have influence over you will have influence over you. For instance, if I believe the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the conversion is take, is, uh, takes place instantly, and the conversion is from sinner to saint. If I believe in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, my sins are cleansed, wiped away, erased, obliterated. If I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in the word of God, my nature of sin is removed. And I actually become something that I was not before I believed. So believing changes your position. Believing transforms your life. Believing produces 
results that to those who are outside are unbelievable. If you know what I mean by that. Things that wow the imagination. And all of these things I enter into not necessarily because of any special abilities that I have. But rather because I took God at his word. Because I took God at his word. So he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to them that believeth, to everyone that believeth. To the Jew first, also to the Greek. Next verse says, it says, For therein, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just those who have been made righteous by faith so you look at that from faith because to be the just that can only happen because you have believed the gospel so believing the gospel is what makes you just. That's what justifies you. That's what makes you righteous. So he's saying here, those who have been made righteous by faith have only one way to live their lives. The way you entered into justification is a way that you must sustain it. And so God is saying there is a key by which you must govern your life. A key by which you must continue to sustain yourself in the kingdom of God. And that key is faith. Believe. Only believe. Jesus Christ said all things are possible to God. For scripture says there is nothing impossible to God. So all things are possible to God. And all things are possible to the one who has the treasure or the key to the treasury house of God's power. Meaning that once faith locks you into the frequency of God, then you can enjoy the provisions of God freely. And since God works in the realm of endless possibilities, you too by faith enter into the realm of endless possibilities possibilities it says the just shall live by faith Romans 10 let's see what scripture says in verse 17 it says so then faith cometh the word cometh is a present continuous term. So it means faith comes. And there is only one way faith can come. Faith is not something that you can have apart from. That's what he's saying here. Faith cometh. It comes. It is generated sustained, propelled. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when God's word is spoken, and you understand it, because you have not heard until you have understood I cannot go into all the details of that, but if you read the book of Mark chapter 4, you'll find some of this there. There are those who hear and don't understand. Those who hear and don't understand cannot walk according to the things they have heard. But those who hear and understand, then they can walk by it. So the Bible says the entrance of your word or the opening of your word, the disclosure of your word gives light and supplies understanding to the simple. 
And understanding is the wellspring of life to them that have it. And faith is generated when you hear and understand. So it says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. And hearing the word of God. So it means therefore that once you are made righteous in Christ Jesus by faith, by believing the gospel, and you enter into a new realm of existence, you become a citizen of the kingdom of God because you are translated from darkness into the kingdom of his dear son and you become a citizen of that kingdom. Now all the citizens of that kingdom function by faith. For the just shall live by faith. They function by faith. That's the way they conduct their lives. All the processes of their lives. Works by faith. Faith is not positive thinking. Faith is not foolish confidence. That I can do it. I can have it. No. It isn't. Hence, we're reading Romans 10, 17. And so faith is not self-generated. It's not just some conviction I have. I just believe it. I just believe it. No. That's not faith. That's not the faith that we're talking about. That's not the faith we're talking about. The faith we're talking about is a faith that has its origin, its source. In the word of God. Apart from the word. This faith does not exist. So if you have a confidence that is outside of the word of God. That's not the faith we're talking about. The faith we're talking about is a faith that rests solely upon the word of God. It rests solely upon the word of God. And that means that if you don't know the word, you can't have this faith. If you don't pay attention to the word, you can't have this faith. If you don't meditate on the word, you can't have this faith. You can't have this faith. And sadly, that is where many of us as believers are today. We have been made just by faith. We are born again. We are heirs to a great inheritance. We are joint heirs with Christ. We know that for a fact. That's who we are because we are born again. But yet, we live our lives outside of the word of God. We do the things that seem right in our own eyes. We follow after everything else but the word of God. For a good number of us, we are driven by our feelings. We are driven by our happiness, our joy. We are driven by our desires and not by the word of God. So living by faith is taking God at his word. How do I take God at his word? And this is not just some bogus belief that I can make it. No. It's a total dependence, the devotion, the commitment, the conviction that whatever it is God says will come to pass. Because it is God who spoke it. Because it is God who spoke it. The first point I want us to to look at is going to be the basis for everything else. It's simply this. It says observation, experience. Observation and experience on the one hand. And then I thought, I said, no, there's something else that we can add to this. So there's observation, experience, and possibilities. And these possibilities are based on projections on account of the experiences of other people. These are the things that shape 
our expectations. Let me say that again. That I'll rephrase it. Our expectations are shaped by possibilities that we see on account of somebody else's experience. So if it happened to that person this way, ooh, then that's likely what's going to happen to me. So that's why I said uh, expectations are shaped by these things. Also shaped by observation or our prior experiences in life. Why is this so important? Because this simple truth is what governs most of the decisions and the choices that we make in life. And so, we tend to govern our lives based on what we see, observe, in the lives of other people. Or some experience I have had in the past. On account of those experiences, I then decide that I cannot move beyond this because I know myself. And I have a basis for coming to this decision. If I do that, I won't succeed. But if I do this, I will succeed. I know myself. We often say. So observations and experiences and the possibilities that we see on other people, in other people's, in our own lives, possibilities that we see in the future, our own future, is based on the experience of other people as well. And we allow those things to shape our lives. Now look at this. If you walk this way, you're walking in pure unbelief. A Christian is not supposed to govern his life based on any of these things that we've talked about. It is the wrong way for a kingdom child to plan his life. And there was famine in the land and uh, everybody was moving to Egypt. And the grass was greener in Egypt. And there's food in Egypt. And those who went to Egypt found a way of sending things through merchants to their impoverished family way back where the patriarchs were at, at that time, where Isaac was. And things were getting tougher and tougher and tougher by the day. And then Isaac decided, based on what I am seeing, based upon the experience that I'm having now, I mean, I've tried. I'm not having a headway. I'm not making a headway. I'm not, I'm not moving forward. Based on all of that, I think the best thing to do is to move my family to Egypt. And when I get there, I will do well. His expectations were based on these observations and his personal experience and the experiences of others. But before he embarked on that journey, God appeared to him and said to him, Isaac, you're not going to leave this place. You're going to stay here. Lord, but stay here. And farm. Now, that act of Isaac's obedience to the word of God to him is what we call faith. It was not based on anything sensory. As a matter of fact, all the natural realities that are bounded around him negated everything God said. But he heard God, God's word. He heard God's word and took a stand based on that. Don't get me wrong. I 
I know when we say things like this, sometimes some people hear themselves and say they heard God. That's not what I'm talking about. Isaac could have contested whatever it is God was saying, but he had God's word to confirm that he ought to have been there. Why? The Lord had already promised that that land he would give to, to him before he was born. For in Isaac shall the promise be the seed is going to be in him. And so everything that I have invested in you, Abraham, Isaac is the bearer of it. He's the heir to all of it. So the, the land is his land anyway. So don't go hear something that is contrary to God's word and then you say, well, pastor said he heard. Anyway, he stayed. He planted. It grew. He prospered. And he didn't just prosper in mediocrity. He excelled in his prosperity. He became very wealthy. To the point that his wealth began to threaten. The people around him. Isaac had the key to the treasure house of God's promises. He believed. And the question to ask to this church is, do we truly believe God? Do we truly believe God? Because you see, if, if we truly believe God, I'm not talking about us going to start hearing voices, no. I'm talking about the word of God. The Bible says it is a more sure word of prophecy. Their promises, their regulations, their guidelines, their commandments, their precepts, their principles. That are already revealed to the church. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds forth out of the mouth of God. That's how man shall live. That's how the believer should live his life, governed by the word of God. A believer who lives a life governed by the word of God, who allows his ideas his opinions, his passions, his desires, his responses to things in life, his values to be formed by the word of God is the believer who is walking by faith. Because many times those ideas, those opinions, those choices that you make may go contrary to the norms of the day. May go contrary to the observable realities. But taking a stand to move in the direction of God's revealed truth is faith at work because you are refusing to comply with the things that are worldly in the worldly paradigm but you have chosen to allow the principles of the kingdom to shape your life your choices you are living by faith 